All right, Jerry, I was going to make a, a longer, nicer video, but uh, kind of pressed for time as it's been picked up today, as you well know. Uh, but that's okay, we can still do this. Just, uh, this is your throttle linkage. You got little quick release balls, you pull back, you pull up, and that's how you get that off. Same thing for the choke. I'm trying to do this one handed, so bear with me. This slides over and up. There you have your throttle linkage is disconnected. Your fuel, you got a little push button here. You push that in, that releases your fuel. I always tuck it up in the throttle linkage there just to kind of keep it out of the way. You have your your start, pull start. I'm going to put this down here. For this just unscrews. That's just a threaded thing. Figure it out, no big deal. Then you push that in. You can remove your pull start. Connectors, self-explanatory. Same with the battery. You just grab one side and you, you can squeeze them apart. Usually, there you go. Now, you have the the pump shaft is in the clutch back there on the motor. You're going to want to release the pump clamp and just slide the pump back a little bit. Now you can release the lever that's up underneath here. Just pull it out. Now the motor's unlocked and you'll be able to slide the motor back. It slides back. Once the motor slid back, You'll be able to pick it up. And again, one-handed. As you can see now, the motor is out of its cradle and is just sitting in there. And just for simplicity of this video, I won't take the motor out actually. But it's ready. You just pick it up and it comes right out. And just slide it back in. There's motor mount feet. You'll see the little slots down there. Once it drops in place, you push the motor locking lever forward again, and that will move the motor back, locking it in place. Now it's time you can come back to the pump. You see, this is your wear ring. You don't have to disconnect this, just take the, the pump uh, loose for the motor. But I'm going to take it out so I can pull the pump out and show you some stuff. And here you have your wear ring. Okay. The factory one is plastic and you have to beat it in and out. This is my aluminum one. And all you have to do is just slide it in place by hand. No tools required. And a simple twisting motion is all you need to get it out. The pump has my grease system on it. Let's go get this thing in here. Well, let's see how it's inside there. The pump shaft needs to go in that hole. So when you're putting things in there, you might have to jiggle it around until it goes in. Again, it has to line up with the splines on the clutch, so work it a little bit, it'll slide right in. Then you can take and lock the pump down. Now, I like to have it clocked just a little bit to the right, just a hair. And this seems to make the boat track a little straighter sometimes. You can play around with it yourself. But make sure the, the clamp is engaged on the pump, lock it in place, and then you have the ball. A quick release ball just like on the throttle. It's a lot easier with two hands. There you go. Alright, now to grease the pump, after every tank of fuel, you'll put a standard grease gun on that grease fitting, and you'll give it about six or seven shots of grease. Now you will probably, if you put too much in there, you'll probably see it come out in between the impeller. If you pulled the pump out, you would notice grease came out from behind the impeller. Don't worry about it. Just go run the boat. It'll clean itself out. It's not a big deal. Uh, 
to yeah, grease the pump after every tank of fuel. That also goes for the hall bearing. This is the bearing where the pump shaft comes through the hall and it needs to be re uh, lubricated regularly. Uh, preferably not quite a tank of gas. I would really, I would really, after uh, at least every trip or two, uh, or 20 miles of full throttle, you want to grease that uh, that hull bearing. I use this, uh, a marine a waterproof grease. Uh, something uh, comparable to that would be fine. All right. But, and put this back together again. Sometimes this little fitting doesn't want to sit in there right. So you might have to sometimes we'll see when you're taking this apart you might inadvertently push the button down and this will open up so just lock it back in place again and clip that in place sometimes you might have to spit on it or something get it wet so it'll slide in sometimes they're a little stubborn that is your vent line you don't need to take that off unless you need to take the fuel tank uh, fuel tank out for some reason but hooking your linkage back up again line up your holes slide it to the left then you can hook up your your linkage again again much easier when you have two hands to work with it really is easy just not one-handed Once you see a little slot, when you pull that back, it exposes it. There you go. There we go. And the choke. Now, typically, you won't need the choke to start it. A lot of times, it will start without it. I would recommend trying to start without the choke the first time of the day, especially when it's warm out. And, uh, probably fire right over. If you want to use the choke, what's going to happen is if it doesn't need it, you're just going to like flood the motor a little bit and it'll take a lot longer to crank over before it fires off. All right, everything's hooked back up there. I'll do that in a few minutes. But the engine hood, the muffler has to come through the back so you line it up and put the motor muffler through there the idea is to pick up and pull back but once your engine hood's on and you have your little latches To start the boat, you said here's your choke. Choke's off right there. And like I said, you probably won't need it to start. Turn the key as you started. All right, you got your throttle. Now I have this one set up. I have this set up so that the throttle stays when you when you do it. What I'm going to do right now, just to alleviate any issues, seeing you've never had one of these before, there's this screw down here, and I'm going to loosen this screw up so that it doesn't hold your throttle. And now the throttle will return by itself, just like a standard motorcycle or whatever. If you decide you want that to, to hold it again later, just tighten that screw up until you're comfortable with it, and it holds, and that's your throttle lock. All right. The seat there's just on Velcro. Your standard Mokai seat pad, nothing fancy about that. Uh, that's your battery. Everything's soldered and, and heat shrunk up, so unless you have an issue and you need to change the battery, uh, leave that alone. All right, this is your stomp grate. Now, 
this is something you have to be very careful about. This is the lock lever, okay? This, this keeps the handle from moving accidentally. You have to push this down, and then you can move the handle forward. Moving the handle forward drops your grate down. All right, so also bear in mind, when the grate is down, you do not want the boat to be moving. You do not want this to happen. You don't want to be messing with this in shallow water. Make sure you're in deeper water where that grate cannot hit anything. And never do it when, like I said, never do it when the boat's moving. But always make sure you pull it back to lock the grate closed. Alright, windshield. Real easy. We have your pen and your clasp down there. I won't take it all off. It's pretty self-explanatory once you see it. But you can take the windshield off like that in 10 seconds. You can't hurt the windshield. The windshield is pretty indestructible. And you can drive it down the road at 90 mile an hour. You're not going to hurt it either. It's not going to come off. It can't go anywhere. Trust it. It will hold up to a lot more than you think it will. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know how to contact me. If you have any uh, problems, again, feel free to contact me. I hope you enjoy it. I appreciate the business, and happy Mokayan.